Huh, did I leave off here? I think I might have messed up the quick load save thing. But this is the next day, 13 hours. That's plenty of time before sleep. Anyway, welcome back everybody to more Road Warden. I think last time I gave up on this place. And I was planning to head north, right? Can't currently pass this area, why not? Yeah, let me double check my stuff. Because I have a job to go somewhere. Because I need this thing. Let's see, I could look up the potion secret chamber where I, I can't figure it out. Somewhere on the road. I'm going to live near Old Pagos. So, if I could go to Old Pagos, uh, that's uh, the map. The question is, where's Old Pagos? Well, let's look up Old Pagos. See groups and locations. A western village settled on barren soil. So that's on the west. That'll be easy enough to get to. Yeah, don't mock the order. Alright, so let's go all the way over there. How long will that take? I guess I don't really know. The path gets greener and meanders between treacherous precipices. You ride slowly, passing by birds and ebexes. But in the distance, you spot circling harpies. And below you, a roaming mountain of a uh, mountain cat pursuing a mouflon. You take a sip from your water skin. Did I start the timer? Okay. From your water skin. The air here is a bit dry. Let's hope that the echo of hooves won't reach any larger beasts. Okay. The path leads you down again to a small moist valley, impenetrable for a rider. The thicket is made of thorny bushes, tall grasses, and the weak fallen boughs that nourish mosses and mushrooms. You examine the remnants of the path covered with greenish puddles. Without the roots and with a fresh layer of pebbles, it may still be restored. You look behind you. The road is clear. No ambushes so far. But if you hope to clear this place, It'd be better to do so soon. It'll only get denser with the passage of days. Well, it's pretty early in the morning, right? Wow, it took me about four hours to get here. Huh. That's all I can do, actually. Okay, well, riding a mount is, isn't going to help me. Your muscles, not used to such tiring work, grow tired quickly. So you take a few short breaks. Avoiding the thorns and dirty water. When it comes to pushing aside the boughs, you breathe heavily, but you need only enough space to let your palfrey get through. Maybe the animals will start to roam this place again, beating the path. Huh, that could be interesting. Maybe. You reach a convenient mountain pass, with crags smoothed out by centuries of rain and wind. The sun warms up both the vegetation and the beaten road. And the only beasts you spot are loud rooks. Oh yeah, that's a kind of bird, isn't it? Glancing at you from the rocks and branches. Clearing the rock slide would take hours of work and a large group of people, while forcing Sodal to climb up and down could break its legs. Okay, I'll dismount and look around. You climb up the rocks, having plenty of spots to rest your hands. Most of them won't even move an inch. As you get closer to the small dead tree, you notice something odd among the stones. Pieces of old fabric, completely, completely covered with mold. Most likely the remains of a tunic. I can't even go further. This is a trouble. I might have to tell somebody to come back here. Stop that, stop that, stop it. Okay, now I can go north. I might have to tell people about what happened here. I think that might be the best idea. Yeah, let's go back to Howler's Den. Tired or hungry? Uh oh. I have to eat something. I also have no food. I think I might actually die soon. <laughs> Tired and hungry. You stare in the distance, observing the smoke coming from the village. The slow minutes spent in the saddle make you dizzy. You'd love to close your eyes for a bit. Is it really so late? You're caught by surprise when Sodal raises its forelegs, scared by a wild cat crossing the road. 
you hit the ground with a boot still stuck in the stirrup and get it dragged for a few steps before your palfrey comes down. Once you get up, you notice a large hole in your pants. I hate this peninsula. <laughs> You ride through the open gate, then carefully dismount. Some of the locals greet you politely, but they keep their distance. After you notice your own smell and the dirt on your clothes, you no longer wonder why. I head to the stables. You spend a few minutes with Sodal, but, be but before you reach the square, someone clears their throat. You turn towards a man in his fifties, with large hands, an elegant beard, and no hair. The Stable Master. He both introduces himself and answers an unspoken question. You frown, then realize that you indeed saw him before, and your palfrey was nicely taken care of during your first visit to the village. Or rather, I'm one when it is necessary, but I'd rather grind flour, he says with annoyance. You do not, you do not think your beast waters itself, brings itself water from a storehouse, and cleans its own zit, nay, takes time and hay. If tis, he points at your companion, is now going to work for it, you better have a pouch at hand. You look behind you. The stables are not much more than an open shed with piles of planks, two donkeys, and a bunch of napping chickens. Would a dragon bone be enough? He nods. For one day, I, uh, that's fair. Uh, he looks around, rubbing his hands together. Here you go. Fine, whatever. He nods with gratitude and throws the bone into a leaky bucket hanging from a nail, then grabs a wooden pitchfork. I let him work in peace. You're wandering through the village. An upset Mouflon is bleeding time and again, waiting for somebody's attention. Two men in light clothes are carrying a wooden log, insulting each other in a friendly banter. How much money do I have? I have... I should have no money, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm broke now. Huh, I'm in trouble. I doubt they'd let me stay here for free. What time is it? Five hours. Ah, the tailor's not gonna do anything without money. You approach the inn. The stools and benches are filled. People share meals, news, and plans for later. The air is lively and filled with soothing routine. I'm just thinking about how uh, much of a complete mess I am right now. It, I think the biggest problem was that I walked across the, the peninsula to try to get to the free potion. The innkeeper is walking among the tables cheerfully, taking care of empty bowls and plates, or bringing new servings from inside the building. Thighs is nowhere to be seen. The stall is in perfect order, but it draws little of the locals' attention. The trader walks around, gossiping. Whenever someone approaches the counter, he moves back quickly. Yet you might be too early to sleep. So, let's look around for the mayor. <laughs> the guard informs you that she needs to look for her. So you sit down on a bench and wait for what feels like an eternity. When Thais joins you, she apologizes for the wait, though her voice and eyes are harsh. Ah, thank you for your time. Uh, okay, uh, mm, I guess he doesn't want to talk to me. Oh, okay, never mind. How about the innkeeper? I need a few rations because I've got- do I have rations? Food rations, okay. There's no reason why I should be hungry. You can't use your inventory right now. So do I not know how to eat or... Whoops. You can't use it right now for some reason. Huh. Okay, forget that part. And I can't bathe myself without something or other. Huh. Yeah, maybe it was a waste to come here. Let's try going north. <clears throat> the road is beaten and free of litter. 
you notice paths between the fruit bearing trees on your right, and soon after that, you ride alongside vast fears of broad beans, almost ready for the second harvest of the summer. Then there are the green hemp plants, taller than you are, waiting for a scythe or a sickle. Okay, so I can't actually take any fruit from. But I'm super hungry, why can't I eat? Can I just eat myself? You can't use your inventory right now for no reason I can figure. Let's see, the fresh snacks spoil fast outside of a cellar, while long-lasting foods are either expensive, like honey or dried meat, or require cooking before consumption, like beans or grains. G grains, blah. Most travelers spend their nights in taverns, huts, and villages, where they can trade for cheap, warm meals, or even eat leftovers for free. Ooh, I might be able to eat for free somewhere. As a result, food rations are eaten only when necessary. I guess it's not necessary then. Huh, I actually got a free arrow. Okay, the locals keep the beasts at a distance, I guess. Huh, now this is some crossroad. So it all's hooves thumped loudly on the beaten track. The green bushes, shrubs, and trees prove that the soil here is fertile. Yet the plants don't overgrow the road. These crossroads must be busy at times, maybe even patrolled. In the distant west, you see the mountain peaks dividing the lowlands from the ocean. The road east leads towards the hills, behind which there are usually unusually tall, dark trees. There's a dense forest in the north, from which you hear the croaking of toads. The last path is already known to you. You're surrounded by four signposts, all of which seem to be made from the same type of wood, now covered in moss and fungi. Yet the result, uh, the, uh, yet the pictures and letters that cover the nail boards are nothing alike. Okay, I'm most interested in the western signpost, so let's read that one last. The long plank, attached with rusted iron nails, is almost empty. It bears no words, only a single picture, painted with great care. It portrays a city-like gate, with a watchtower to its left and right, and a couple of small conifers growing beside the partially and partially behind the towers. So a big town over there, that was the eastern. Let's check the north. It's attached with nails made of pointy carved bones, and divided into three sections covered with small engravings. The part on the left has three large squares with roof-like lines hanging from them. No other pictures or words. Okay, so it must be a village over there. The one in the middle has only th one square, but also a simple, horizontal symbol of a fist and a sort of word behind it, but beneath it, which you don't recognize. The image on the right has two roof square, uh, roofed squares, but also two other images, which you recognize easily. A deer and a standing barrel. This is kind of useless, isn't it? Okay, check the southern signpost. Wait, that's just where I came from. It's covered with green, blue, and white paint that portray simple squares with roof-like lines hanging above them. Each square has a larger letter inside it, though you don't recognize them. Nevertheless, the pictures are not too old. There are no other words or marks. The plank was attached with a set of wooden wedges. Excuse me. Okay, the western post. It has two planks attached to a single post, both of them nailed with rusty steel. The lower sign is divided in two halves. The left edge is engraved with four simple sates, squares with roof-like lines hanging above them. The other edge bears two, engraving, uh, two engraved piles, one of them made uh, of horizontal rectangles. Okay, that's, that's long ways. The other of inexact circles. Yeah, I don't recognize what this means exactly. The upper plank is covered with two sort of words drawn in white paint, and right below them, an engraved vertical tri a rectangle with an hourglass inside it. Huh, hourglass. That's the same as that dolmen. Okay. Let's search the area. The thicket doesn't help. You notice the remains of berries and pears, but most of them are already rotten. Dang it. Spread close to the wooden stools at the side of the road. The nearby creek is not impressively deep, but the beaver dam, for some reason, taller 
for some reason taller than you are, makes it wide and waters the surrounding soil. A few steps away from the southern signpost, you find something sticking out of a shrub. It's a moist plank, covered in fungi. You try to move it with a stick and a gloved hand. I know it's pronounced fungi, but I like it my way. <laughs> After a minute or so, you confirm it's an abandoned sign, covered with green letters and colorful pictures of flowers and trees. What time is it? I'm quickly running out of time. I have to keep going. Take another look at it. Huh. This could be interesting, but it might be... Yeah, let's go ahead and stick around. I searched for the area some more. After another few minutes of disturbing the local fauna, you're in the stir. There's nothing more to be found. Okay. Uh, taking another look at the sign will just give me the previous things. So where did the sign used to be attached? The southern post is the only one with holes left by nails. Huh. Okay, let's just keep traveling then. Now this might get me around to the rock slide. You cross a clean, shallow, yet white creek that runs south. Then follow the uphill path squeezed between the hills and the lust forest. A lust forest. You spend a good a couple of minutes passing a haunting meadow filled with dozens, maybe hundreds of cut down trees now overgrown by bushes and trees and, and grass. You can't think of another time when you've seen such a clearing of such a size. Blah. Huh, that was some monster. Huh. Looks are surly ambitious. I wonder how they can push it. Yeah, I'll side with the humans. The locals are surly ambitious. I wonder how far they can push it. What's happening down there? This is a long one. Okay. Once the clearing ends and turns into a corridor of trees and hills, you stop your horse. There's a monster in the middle of the road, reaching out with its long arms to grab and devour fruits and leaves from tree crowns, chewing them without haste. It's standing on its hind legs and leaning on a thick tail. As there isn't much hair on its gray skin, you see its impressive muscles. The beast is three times the size of a human, and while each move it makes is slow, its long claws and the ease with which it breaks one of the branches makes you think that a single swing would be enough for it to pierce through your jacket, or, just as likely, that it would simply break your bones and send you into the air. Like most people, you know quite a bit about pebblers. Once they get used to an in unfenced farm or a forest garden, getting rid of them can be a huge issue. There aren't many blades able to cut through their thick skin and bones, and a single mistake may put them into a furious charge, encouraging them to look for human dwellings, which they can tear down in revenge. The beast doesn't give you as much as a glance, but also doesn't move away. The best you can hope for is that it's going to walk away on its own. Maybe tomorrow, maybe later. And this game just keeps putting blockades in my way. Okay, so we don't really have too much of a choice over here. We won't have to head north. I'm pretty sure there's a town over there. According to the signs, there are towns everywhere. Let's go. Also, I'm actually running out of time. So I think I'll go ahead and stop it here. So I'll see all of you next time. Bye.